Snipers, you have to see what's happening to the cryptocurrency market this weekend as Bitcoin is enjoying its cup of coffee below the $32,000 level. And that's below all of our market structural support levels and the $35,000 level where we saw a daily candle rejection yesterday, a bearish engulfing. Notice how this daily candle closed below the body of the bullish candle that we initially saw on the 22nd of June. That's an extremely bearish continuation sign. However, I do want to throw a puzzle piece on the table, as I always do to you snipers, because for those that have been talking about the 2019 death cross, I've been getting a lot of messages about this, especially if you were tuned into the snipers channel in 2019 when I covered this. I don't know if you guys remember this time, but it's starting to feel a lot like it did from September to November of 2019 when Bitcoin out of nowhere, crashed below the $10,000 level, saw consolidation here at the $7,000 to $8,000 level before the death cross happened. And out of nowhere, we saw a 40% jump to the upside. What I want to talk about today is if we were to copy this pattern and look at the Elon Musk dump that we recently saw with Bitcoin falling from the $58,000 level to the $30,000 level, and we were to take the time frame and copy this to look at how this would correlate with today's market action. This is the pattern that we would get. And if we were to just put this on top of the current consolidation to compare these two patterns, notice how we're starting to see some very similar price action to what we saw in that period from September of 2019 to November. And what I mean by very similar patterns is notice how we continue to form these lows and then we form these higher lows, but then we come down, we form another higher low, but then a lower low. And so very similar to what's happening right now happened in 2019. And so I want to throw this scenario on the table because if we were to see this pattern play out. In my opinion, it would go along the thesis that we've had on this channel for the last three weeks, which is Bitcoin has the potential at any point in time to see a lot of volume come in. And that's the move that we're waiting for right now, especially after four weeks of consolidation below the forty one thousand nine hundred and fifty dollar level. Are we going to see a push to the upside or downside when this volume comes in? A lot of those hints will come in the micro time frames, but so far we know there is a lot of volume below 30,000, right? The institutions didn't mind printing their volume on the six hour chart, and we've only seen wicks below 30,000. You can see a lot more buyers than sellers. I'm standing true to my opinion. It would be foolish, in my opinion, as an investor in this market, to not have buy limit orders at these lower ranges starting at 26,000 down to 24,000 down to 20,000 US dollars just in case something happens like what happened in 2019 where we see this extended period of consolidation creating all of this fear in the market and out of nowhere we see the last draw of volume which we don't know how significant or intense this could be but let's say it's this intense right getting two positions down at these lower levels and then expecting all of this volume and pressure that we know is there to act in your trading account is going to be the best case scenario for all of us. Right? So this is the scenario that I'm watching right now. And could we just out of nowhere, see this push to the upside? That's also on the table. That's why it was a weekend video today. And I thought it would be interesting to bring up this 2019 scenario. But what's even more interesting snipers is what's happening to altcoins. And we're going to talk about the micro time frame for Bitcoin and go more into this potential pattern that could form here like it did in 2019. But the Ethereum to US dollar price showing weakness as we've been expecting here, having a cup of coffee at 1760. This is a very critical zone because the only next support is the previous all time high. And so just like Bitcoin, there are these very big gaps that we're playing in. And 
having buy limit orders at these lower areas is probably a wise thing to do because I think at some point or another, whether this follows traditional technical patterns and structural patterns, triangles, wedges, whatever you guys want to look at on your charts. What I know is the crypto market is the most unpredictable market in the world. It's the truest and freest market in the world. And so with Bitcoin and Ethereum down 50% over the last few months, it is way wiser of a decision to be dollar cost averaging entries at these levels than it is to be dollar cost averaging entries at these higher levels at 4,000, 3,000, 2,000. Why not get your positions in at 1700, 1500, 1400, 1200, maybe 999, right? So this is a very interesting time in the crypto market. The question is, which altcoins are going to see the liquidity flow into them? I think a lot of this is going to have to do with this Ethereum to Bitcoin chart. The largest altcoin is going to lead the other altcoins. It's a leading indicator in some cases. I'm expecting a little bit more weakness here. I think the reason we'll see that is because of the fear that's still in the market, the fear and greed index today at a 20, which is a new low for the last two months, I believe. And so with all that fear in the market, we could still see some weakness here with altcoins. But the other's dominance chart doing exactly what we want, having a cup of coffee at 12.2 percent dominance, not showing weakness. This is also the 20 week moving average. That's a very positive thing. All we've seen here is a reallocation of capital from meme coins and hype coins that have no teams, no developers, no futures, no roadmaps to coins like Cardano and Ethereum. And so, yes, we're seeing a pullback in altcoin dominance, but it's the exact pullback we want. And if you guys have been tuning to the Cyber Channel, I've been saying to hold on to your Cardano, hold on to your Ethereum, hold on to the fundamentally sound coins, make your DAO, right? Auto didn't do so well, unfortunately, but I still have belief in that. You just got to hold the bag, right? And so right now, I think we're seeing a very prime opportunity. Of course, if Bitcoin comes down to these levels, that's when it's going to be an opportunity to also get into these altcoins, right? And so it all follows Bitcoin. You guys are watching the Sniper's channel. My name is Naeem al -Obedi. You're watching a Saturday video. Remember to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. So let's first talk about what's happening to Bitcoin on the weekly chart. This is going to close here in 24 hours. And at this point, it's our first test of the 50 week moving average here sitting at 30,400 US dollars for Bitcoin. We go into the daily chart and of course, we've had this death cross recently right around the 20th of June. And so far, the institutions have been starting to print their volume on the daily and four hour time frames as we saw this immense amount of buy pressure come in when we initially came back below 30,000, just like we expected. And so, so far, we've yet to form any further lows on the four hour chart. Any price action that doesn't breach twenty eight thousand eight hundred and five, which was the candle low on the 22nd of June, which is now an extremely significant level. Anything above that is just going to be considered a higher low, and that could allow Bitcoin to slowly grind its way back up. We want to keep this situation in mind. But remember, I think the only way we're going to see a push down below 30,000 is if a lot of volume comes in. And so monitor this $30,000 level and monitor the volume, right? So we come into the one hour chart. Let's talk about how we're reacting to 30,000 right now, because we are at an extremely key level on the hourly. We don't see volume, right? We go into the 15 minute. We're starting to see some volume. We go into the one minute. And now we're starting to see buyers come in, right? But we extend this chart to really look at the power of the volume, who's really in control. And so far, when we crossed and breached this major support level here at 32,000, notice how all the sell pressure came in, no buyers in sight. And since then, we have not seen any buy volume amass the type of sell pressure that brought us below. And so are we going to see a rejection of thirty two thousand continued upside and then some real sell volume come in? That's on the table. Once again, twenty six thousand US dollars is where I think the next door for real buy volume to come in is going to have to wait for. And so until then, we follow the path of least resistance, which is sideways to a little bit higher. And that's why, unfortunately, this weekend hasn't been as exciting as it could be. 
We're just camping out. I talked about that yesterday, having a cup of coffee at this important level. The key level for the upside at this point is always going to be that $34,788 level. So keep it simple, be entertained and be ready for some high volume moves. If we see further downside, that's the play for Bitcoin and the overall market's going to follow that. But when it comes to these altcoins, I really believe Ethereum is going to be a great play here soon. With the Ethereum US dollar price coming down back below 2000, testing 1760, now inside of this range between 1440, the previous all time high, and this major level of 1760, I think anything in between 1760 and 1440 is a solid area to start entering into positions for Ethereum. I think that this Ethereum to Bitcoin chart is eventually going to see a reversal here once we come down to 53,500 Satoshis. This market structural support also shows confluence in this area. And Ethereum 2.0 is coming out. Fundamentals will follow and bring strength here, especially with Cardano as well coming in. I'll probably talk more about Cardano here tomorrow because it's been doing a lot of interesting stuff. Of course, it's back above a dollar. If it comes back towards a dollar or below a dollar, that's when we can start covering. I think that'll be a great time to possibly get in total cryptocurrency market cap chart just lagging below the 200 day moving average, still having a cup of coffee, nothing to be worried about here. I really believe we're having a reallocation in capital right now. Um, you know, whether it's it's the altcoins uh, going to Bitcoin or the meme coins going into better altcoins, we're seeing a shift in capital. Others dominance is stable. That's a good thing. Bitcoin dominance slowly creeping up. Not a surprise. We're not going to cover traditional markets today. And that's it. Snipers, if you want to win one of my favorite book on value investing principles, comment below, share this video. And we're going to wrap up the Saturday video. We have a long week ahead of us. Let's see here. Jamison Douglas says, thanks for the on point technical analysis as always, and also appreciate the playful, confident viewpoint. Send me a message on Instagram. The link is in the description below. Jamison, you want a book. I really appreciate those kind words. And with that, I hope today was a laid back analysis. I wanted to bring up that 2019 scenario. It's just been on my mind. A lot of you have talked about it in the comments, and I thought it would be cool to you know, replicate that, put that on the chart for you guys to see what an inverse Bart head pattern looks like. And with that, thank you all for tuning in today. Until next time, snipers.